the campaign rather was more of an advocacy. It wasn't really to move merchandise or to fill up uh, spaces in the bus. It was really more of an advocacy to, you know, more for cultural promotion, preservation, educating people about different cultures, different stories that we normally don't point the spotlight on uh, in the north. So it was more really an advocacy and uh, it's more like helping out, giving back to the communities in the north by telling their stories, by shedding light on, on, on things that are not normally uh, seen. So for instance, like uh, right now, the third video that we have floating around is Kalinga Wallis Making. So which is very mundane when you really think about it, but those are the stories that we want to bring out. The nature of their business does not really, not really require advertising because their buses are, you know, because it's very basic. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. So it's more of them wanting to really be of value uh, uh, to the communities in the north, to the, to the routes that they service. But then if you take a look at the stories we've done, some, are, some places, are, are, some routes are not really part of their routes. So for instance, we've done a, a feature on the Independence Day event last year where there was a flag hoisting in the bottom of Philippine rice. So Philippine rice, no one really, you know, it's not being served. But it's a, it's a story about the North. And so it's not just a commitment to, we have, for instance, we have their, their traditional routes like Baguio or, or Zambales and all that. But um, you know, no one really goes to the Philippine rice. Yeah, yeah. So you, clearly, even there, you can see that it's not to generate traffic. Mm -hmm. So it's more like uh, this is something of national importance. And this is something that we can probably help in terms of generating a lot more sense of nationalism. Mm -hmm. so there's a bigger picture. We were given the mandate to curate and pick stories. Uh, so we wanted to. First, it's really about education. Or if there is a, to a particular topic that maybe needs a different way of looking at it, or maybe there is a topic that no one has really covered. So for instance, when you say Kalinga, the first thing that comes to your mind is Si Wang On. And so people keep asking us, why did you not do a feature on Wang On? Because the whole Kalinga, the whole Kalinga tattooing narrative is not just Wang On. She is part of a bigger narrative. And the last human of Tanudan, for instance, is a bigger part, is a big part of that whole narrative. So by introducing this, you see that as a viewer probably you will you will realize that you know there is a lot more to this than we've just been focusing on one particular aspect when the narrative is actually a lot encompassing. So in this regard, we're expanding the horizon and shedding light on a whole tradition of tattooing. Uh, so for instance, uh, when you say tattooing, right now it's associated with Buscalan. But no one has really, no, no, really heard of Tanudan, where the majority of the last tattooed women with full sleeve tattoos are from that village, not Buscalan. So now we've opened it up and maybe help out in terms of maybe, because they're trying to promote the place as a as a place where you can hike, uh, stay in a homestay, immerse in the culture, so forth and so on. So we are we have partnered with the local tourism group to be able to help them market this place in a certain way that you don't really uh, it's it's sort of like controlled in a sense that to get there you have to hike and all that. Uh, you have to touch base with the tourism office because you need to maybe liaise with the uh, NCIP. So there are certain protections also accorded to that community. So it's something that you can monitor. At the same time, we're working with the tourism office. In fact, part of the part of the when we when we work with an LGU, say Pangasinan or Baguio, Kalinga, um, what do you call this Tagayan. Uh, uh, most of our videos, the LGUs are asking for them because now they become like instead of like spending 
to be able to do their tourism campaigns. Mm -hmm. They get our videos and that's what they use. Yeah. For instance, Baguio, um, Baguio has actually submitted an application for uh, the NGO of Baguio submitted an application to be included in the UNESCO list okay, as an art haven in the north. So that's what they want to do. And our videos about Kidla Tahimik, the artists, so forth and so on, uh, these videos were used as part of the submission, giving evidence to help them make their case. So things like that, uh, they, they ask for you know, possibly, the possibility of uh, using those videos and it's really for them. So it's not, nope, that's ours, you can't copy. So if you look at it, all those videos are being used by the LGUs for their own purposes as well. So in a way, we've, uh, the company has actually subsidized their tourism campaigns. Not just tourism, but even preservation, yeah. heritage. Uh, this last women of Tanudan, we liaised very closely with the NCIP. And in fact, all the photos, the videos and all that, we donated it to the NCIP of Kalinga because they've always wanted to document it for archiving purposes because these are the last. So now with all those photos, all those videos, we gave it to them. So it's a partnership. So beyond that, there's a use for the LGUs, for the various government agencies. Now we're, we're shooting, we're doing Sierra Madre. Uh, we just finished Batanes. See, Batanes is not in the routes of Victory Liner, but we're covering it because we want to be able to cover the entire north. We're actually documentary filmmakers. Okay? We've done the documentaries that have aired in National Geographic. A mm -hmm. um, few years ago, we did a documentary about um, whale shark tourism. And, and then it's called On the Brink. And then that particular uh, documentary won the Oceans Award in the Global International Film Festival in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So that. We have done other documentaries about how football has affected, um, how football has helped in trauma counseling of the survivors of of Yolanda. So that particular documentary was featured in, in the Manhattan Film Festival. Uh, we, we won there. Um, we've done documentaries about Tawi-Tawi, uh, for instance. Uh, it's been aired at the National Museum. Where we'll be showing it in other networks. Uh, uh, apart from other things. We, we've done tourism campaign, the tourism campaign, for instance, of summer. It hasn't been released yet. Uh, uh, it's an odd, it's an odd mix of uh, projects, but really our strength is narratives, stories. So we we do stories, and hopefully there's a fit with particular clients that they want their their campaigns tied up closely with that. Uh, hopefully not just to move merchandise, see, but to have maybe. And you know, I think the the the, the uh, material is actually evolving. So there's a lot of storytelling now, in terms of length. Now, that, like this one, last last week of the is about five minutes. Initially, we're thinking, do they do people have the capacity to watch a five minute uh, feature on the phone? But it has, it, you know, it has been proven that there is there is. We did a feature which was also uh, which was also cited earlier, the Silaki Giant Now, That particular uh, feature is about eight minutes. And as of as of uh, last check, engagement for that was like 1.1 million views for an eight-minute film. See, so I think there's also an appetite for for stories now.